RCTV Studios offers quality summer programs for kids and teens. These programs are ideal for the budding actors and actresses of the world, as well as the future directors, sound engineers, and more. Students receive training on the most up-to-date studio equipment around, from high-definition cameras, chroma key, and Final Cut Pro, just to name a few. Workshops are available for kids and teens ages 10 to 17 and range from stop-motion animation to music videos, TV production, and filmmaking. For more information, visit www.rctv.org. Hello, and welcome to RCTV's coverage of the March 3rd, 2020 local and presidential election. I'm Katie Robertson. I'm joined tonight by Kevin Vent. Kevin, thanks so much for joining me. It's great to be here, Katie. It's been, a, would say, above average, exciting election season here in Reading, so I really wanted to be here to uh, kind of see what happens and what's going to go forward from this point. I absolutely agree with you. <laughs> there has been a lot of action coming into this election. So yes. um, as you've been driving around town the past couple of days, what have you been seeing? Well, it's been really interesting to see. I think uh, that uh, people's investment in this election seems to be a little greater than it is typically. I think I've seen a few more signs on lawns and that kind of thing and a few more uh, people out on the common uh you know, shilling for their candidates and that kind of thing. Several hundred, I think, the other day on Saturday. Um, and even at the field house today, it just seemed like to be a hub of activity. Yeah, there was a lot happening at the field house when I was down there this afternoon. So uh, that's great to see. Um, you know, we're going to talk about voter turnout a little bit later. But Once we have some more solid numbers yeah, there. But, but yeah. anecdotally, it seems high. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's uh, 732 now. So if you're watching us and you have not gone to vote, you have 28 minutes to get down to the field house. Which I think you can, anyone in town should be able to get to the field house within 28 yes. minutes. It's not that long a drive. Yeah. So put us on DVR and we'll see you back in a few minutes. <laughs> uh, for those of you that have gone to vote, thank you so much for doing your civic duty. It's really important to participate in local politics uh, it, as and and with this being the presidential race as well it, it really is you know the presidential race spurs interest in local elections just in general but I really think that the local elections are so important it's kind of where your feet are on the ground literally mm -hmm. in in town you know it, it's a local election that determines you know how your streets are paved it's a local election that determines who you know how your kids are educated and that kind of thing and I'm always surprised that more people don't get invested in the local election than, than do in, a, in a, a year where there isn't a presidential election around mm -hmm. so you know I, I think it's uh, it's good that people have gone out and it seems like people have come out this year a little greater than they typically do and so uh, hopefully that carries through through the rest of the evening and through when the polls close at eight o'clock yes definitely uh, so we'll just do a quick ballot rundown for everybody um, uh, especially with the candidates uh, in races that are contested. Uh, we'll go over those as well. Uh, so starting with moderator, we had Alan Folds Alan up Folds. for year 24. Year 24, <laughs> unopposed for year 24 for Alan Folds. And uh, we presume he's going to be elected. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's, you know, I think it's, it's real, a real uh, model of consistency, number one also, but also great to see someone who's so committed to that role mm -hmm. um, going forward in that. So it's really, really cool to see. I think also we have not only moderator, but who's next on the ballot? Uh, select, select Board. Select Board. And select Board, of course, has been the interesting race thus far yeah. this year. There are three people on the ballot, but there's also a write-in, which we're going to talk about yes. a little bit uh, later, a little writing campaign. So we have uh, Megan uh, fiddler Carey, who has, uh, oh, so this is school committee that's yes. up on the screen right now, yeah. not? <laughs> so yeah. Okay. All right. We'll talk about school, school committee. committee. Then. All right. School <laughs> committee has Megan Figler Carey, who is running. We have uh, Aaron Gaffin and Carla Nazaro, who have put their names in uh, for the three year seat on Correct. the school committee. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Andrew Friedman, as, as you mentioned, for select board, Carlo Bacci, Karen Gately-Herrick. And we do have a line this year for write-in, which is not something that we typically have. Um, but there has been uh, an official campaign write-in uh, campaign strategy, I guess, yeah. <laughs> um, for John Halsey. And, so, a very, and a very active one. Too. Yes. So we have a, we have a line-in for that as well. So continuing down, we have the Municipal Light Board. There's are three-year seats, and there's actually only one seat on that. So this is a contested election, which mm -hmm. hasn't received a lot of press, unfortunately, this year. But you have Robert Coulter and uh, Vivek Sony, who is running for that on the, on the Municipal Light Board. 
Uh, and for library trustees, which is a three-year position, um, it's Nina Panacchio and Monette Dugas-Verrier. And uh, that is a non-contested non non race. Both, both of them are, and I think both of them are running for re-election as well. They're, oh, okay. Are continue, yes, are continue, that's correct. They've been on the Library Board of Trustees prior to this. Then, of course, we also have all of the uh, races for the uh, town meeting seats as well yes. going on. Um, so that's kind of that's an important thing, as we'll talk probably with uh, Alan Folds in a few minutes about. But that's also a very important piece of the puzzle in terms of uh, figuring out how our town is managed and, and, and run and that kind of thing. So a very active ballot this year with contested elections for select board, uh, school committee, and the municipal light board in yes. particular. Uh, and one further, uh, Sean Brandt is running for a uncontested seat on the school committee for the one-year seat. One, year seat. Year seat. one yeah. year seat, yes, yes. And we don't want to forget that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, we're going to take a quick break, uh, and then we'll come back with a little bit more analysis on why this is such an active uh, election cycle for Reading, um, as well as some results once the polls close at 8 o'clock. We'll be back in a few minutes. And we're back here at RCTV. I'm Katie Robertson. I'm joined tonight by Kevin Vent. Uh, we're looking at a live feed right now from the field house, uh, which still looks busy at uh, 7.38. There are definitely some people still getting in line and getting their votes done. There's you know, only about 22 minutes left that the polls will be open, and so there are a few people. Maybe they heard you tell them yes. to get down there. I think there was probably a flood at that point. RCTV, <laughs> you know, while they were getting their dinner and what have you, and they said, oh, I forgot to vote, and you get down there. So, yeah, there's definitely some people voting. Definitely, if you look into the voting booths there, mm -hmm. you definitely see a number of people still casting their ballots and so that's a good thing and hopefully uh, we'll have a significant turnout for this election I think it will uh, help a lot of people involved um, it was an interesting election process this yes. year especially in the select board there was some drama mm -hmm. uh, about three weeks ago or so at a select board meeting where a candidate Andrew Friedman um, maybe said some things he probably shouldn't had uh, during a, a live meeting and it kind of created some controversy. Yes, and uh, that's a big reason why we have a write-in campaign tonight. So there's a there's one official write-in campaign, uh, as we mentioned earlier, for John Halsey tonight. Um, uh, making it official basically means that he went to the town clerk and filed that he wanted to be an, an uh, candidate. Uh, so we do have a write-in uh, section of our uh, poll results tonight, which is not something that we typically have right. on election night. Um, and it could have an, an impact on what we're able to share and um, and call tonight, uh, unofficially even, uh, at RCTV. Right. We were speaking with the town clerk earlier today about this situation, and she basically said that, uh, that even though there might be, you know, however many write in uh, votes cast that we can give a number on it's not necessarily a given that all of those votes are for the official writing candidate mm -hmm. john halsey so they have to go through by hand and look at every single one of those and kind of verify that it's an actual vote an actual ballot and for whom you know for whom it was cast um, you know on top of that uh, she also told us that one of the reasons that there could be a delay in that is that the presidential uh, ballots have to be done first and any write-in candidates that are on the presidential ballots have to be done before the local ones are done I don't know who tells her that but someone told her that she had to do that <laughs> so so as a result she said possibly Thursday mm -hmm. before we know how the write-in campaign uh, would go and that kind of affects the the local election for a select board in that if the writing campaign gets more votes than any of the declared candidates uh, it would delay how we could possibly call it mm -hmm. tonight and so uh, there's been a lot of activity around this writing campaign mm -hmm. as we've been riding around town as well and certainly on social media etc so it, it'll be very interesting to see how that actually plays out tonight yes and uh, we should note also just be, we have the write-in on the polls that does not mean that all of those votes were cast for that that's correct candidate candidate as well. Yeah, yeah, we don't know. You know we, all we know is when the machine spits out the number, it just tells us the number of write-in votes that were cast. It does not tell us for whom they were cast, mm -hmm. which is why it could take a while. We might not be able to make a call on select board tonight. We will have to see. Yes. Um, and see how that kind of goes. Uh, there are also, she, she, the uh, town clerk, Laura Jim, also did mention that there are a couple of official write-in campaigns for town meeting tonight also. Mm -hmm. She didn't tell us who. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but so, I mean, it's good. I think, you know, ideally you want you want uh, candidates to kind of get their signatures and, and, and get down there and get their nomination papers done and all that. But at least when people see that there's a need, 
they're willing to throw their hat in the ring and, and kind of say, oh, I'm willing to stand up mm -hmm. for town meeting or, or something like that, when they realize that their precinct is going to be underrepresented if, if they don't. So, And so sometimes just a few votes can make a difference. Uh, we've seen that in the past, um, and especially I find with town meeting. Um, oh, yeah. A, a few yeah. votes there can really make a difference. So if you do you know, decide to do a write-in campaign for town meeting, it, it can work. Yeah, and as we saw just a few election cycles ago, there was a member of the Board of Selectmen who only lost by five votes. Mm -hmm. You know, so, and, and certainly, you're absolutely right with town meeting. Yeah. You know, goodness, you know, sometimes people get three or four votes for town meeting, and that's enough to put them in <laughs> town meeting. Un unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, that, you know, people just don't run or just don't vote for mm -hmm. it. I, I've never understood why they don't, but that's, unfortunately, yeah. that's the case. But at least, as I said, I, I, I admire those who say, you know what, there's a need here, I'm going to try to fill that need. And, and to actually do so officially, I think, is a, is, is a, a step in the right direction. So uh, this, this writing campaign is kind of a... a a direct, I would say, result of some drama that's happened in town politics recently. Another result of that is the recall petition. If you were down at the field house today, you might have seen um, uh, booths for a recall pe petition. Um, and uh, could, could you speak a bit about how that has come to pass? Yeah, basically, you know, for those who haven't been paying attention mm -hmm. uh, as closely as others may have, you know, there was a, um, some suggestion that the process of hiring the police chief. Um, didn't work the way it was supposed to, and that it's possible that the uh, you know that uh, certain people believe that the the chair of the board, of the select board, um, you know, didn't use her authority correctly in those situations, and has caused some people to to try to do a, a recall. They needed 250 signatures to initiate the process, um, uh, which they got. I think they had 318 were actually verified in that process, and that kicks it into the next step. You know, and so this next step is they have to get 10% of the voters to sign uh, a petition, uh, which is about, in Reading, a little over 1,900, somewhere in that neighborhood, a little over 1,900 voters that they need to actually sign a petition that would then kick in a, a potential recall mm -hmm. election, at which point my understanding is is then the people will get to decide, whether A, whether or not they want to recall, and then B, if they do want to recall, who they would vote for. So, you know, so that's kind of where we've come from, you know, uh, with, the, with the recall. It's, it's, it's been a little testy mm -hmm. in some of these areas in the last several weeks. And, you know, of course, my hope is, is that we can kind of settle down and get back to business as normal, um, but we'll see what happens. And, you know, if, if the people really want it, then it should happen. That's what happens in a democracy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so hopefully, you know, if yep. the people really want something, uh, it will happen. So, you know, we may be sitting here in 60 days or whatever, yeah. 80 days, trying to, you know, looking at another election. Hope, you know, we'll see what happens with that. Yeah. Um, but it has been testy. It's already a heavy election year. We it have, is. We'll it have is. three uh, in We already Reading. have three on the books on in Reading yeah. this year. Um, and, and the only reason we don't have four on the books is because the select board chose to actually put the local election this year with the presidential primary in hopes of stirring up some voter turnout. Yeah. Um, so, so there could have been four. Now there's three, though. Today it's actually two separate elections on the same day. Yeah. So for those of you in the last 15 minutes here or so who haven't gone to the polls yet and are rushing out Run! the door to head down to the polls right now, you're actually going to get there, and there are two ballots that you can choose, not just one but two. One is for the presidential primary. The other is for the local election for a select board, school committee, light board, etc. So make sure you get both ballots if you haven't done so already. So um, to, we're, we're going to look at this a little bit more when we have uh, final numbers once the polls close, but uh, the idea was that putting the presidential election and the local election on the same day will increase voter turnout. Yeah, this was a, 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 a I'll say, a, a deliberate decision by the mm -hmm. select board to do this kind of, uh, you know, they, they spoke with the town clerk, they asked for some numbers, you know, and what, what is turnout like in years that, that it's not together or nothing else is going, what is turnout like in presidential primary years, and they made the decision to uh, put these two elections together, even though they need twice as many poll workers, they need twice as uh, many counters, and so on and so forth. But uh, that was their choice, and, and from what we're hearing, it seems like at least their goal was met. Um, we looked at some of the numbers from previous years. Last year, voter turnout in the local election was 18.3%. Um, in 2018, for those of you who have been around for a couple of years, you remember there was an override election with the local election, and that was actually 43.8% voter turnout. But in 17, it was only 17.5% in the local election. And what we're hearing now is it's possible that voter turnout is somewhere in the 50% range or more in some precincts this, this year. So it seems as though 
the, the decision by the select board has borne itself out, at least in the terms of voter turnout. Yeah, the strategy may have worked. The strategy may have worked. <laughs> and, and Which is excellent. It's excellent. I'm all in favor of, of, of a voter turnout. I think democracy works best when the voters participate. And if it takes, you know, an exciting presidential mm -hmm. race to get them involved in more local politics, then I think that's a good thing. Uh, well, we just had that uh, field field house shot up again. Um, I, I always think it's important to plug our volunteers down there. Yeah, as absolutely. you mentioned, we, we they needed more this year for um, for the increased uh, election, doing two elections in one, really. Um, so I also spoke to Laura Jem earlier. So there are 217 volunteer election workers wow. uh, that volunteered to help out today. Um, and they do that in two shifts. So basically, Laura needed 140 people to work the morning shift and 140 people to work the afternoon shift. And some real sturdy people are working both. <laughs> many, many people are working both. Um, so that's a 12 plus hour day right. um, and you know they also have to go to a training and uh, be well prepared for any eventualities that might happen today many people um, do this many years uh, and many elections in a row Laura in fact has done 32 elections in the last 11 years which is almost three essentially three a basically year. three a year yeah, yeah which uh, and will be above average this year <laughs> they'll be above average this year, you know, well they'll be there two today even though it kind of coalesces into one and we know there'll be the state primary in September as well as of course the general election in November so we know there's gonna be at least two more this year and if the recall ballot actually mm -hmm. uh, occurs there will be another one so it's gonna be a a long year for some of these election workers. I see as we're looking at the uh, the polls here now, there actually seems to be a stream of people coming here in, into the uh, polling place in the last 12 minutes. Um, it seemed to be like a little crowd there. I don't yeah. know if they you know, came together or <laughs> you know, share, ride shared or something like that to get there. <laughs> Ubered them, you know, shared an Uber to get there or whatever, I don't know. But but uh, it's looking like there's at least uh, a few people still coming into the polls here at uh, at about 11 minutes to the to the time that the poll closes. But what I, from my understanding, is anyone who is in line when the polls officially close will be allowed to vote. So it's not as though it's eight o'clock and the lights go off and everything. <laughs> that's it. Anyone who is there. So if you need to rush down, as long as you get yourself in their doors, you know, of the of the field house by eight o'clock, they will mm -hmm. allow you to vote. So, you know, if you're only a few minutes away and you said, oh, it's kind of late, and, you know, I might not get there, give it a try. Yeah, you know, I, can't I, hurt. I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. Um, I do also want to point out, it was it was a tradition when I was young, but uh, I love seeing kids down at the okay. at the voter, uh, at, at the field house, voting um, in conjunction with their parents or at least accompanying at least. their parents. Um, I know that I went to many, uh, yep. many a vote in the field house before I was of legal age. <laughs> uh -oh. uh, <laughs> Voter yep, that's correct. <laughs> uh, you heard it here first. <laughs> Breaking um, news. Yeah. <laughs> All um, elections in running tainted. Yeah, but uh, I really love that that so many parents and guardians bring bring their kids with them to the polls. I think it's a good lesson to learn. It is a good lesson to learn, and it teaches kids that you know voting doesn't take that much effort in terms of getting no. there and doing it. You'd have to be a little knowledgeable of what's going on, and we hope that voters educate themselves before they come to the polls. But you know, it, you get people involved in in voting early, and it becomes a, a tradition as you said or mm -hmm. it becomes a uh, you know just something that you do you know and, and that's the way it was for me the same kind of thing my mom would always drag us by the arms over into the polls and say you sit there while I go into the booth and vote and I just became a natural thing for me hey mm -hmm. when it's election day you go and vote it's what yeah. you do and, uh, and I think again democracy works best when we participate and so um, I'm, I'm all in favor of training the younger generation to be participants in our democracy um, as much as we possibly can <laughs> so, uh, yes, so and you and you also uh, we do also have uh, some RCTV folks down there right now. Um, our uh, one of our intrepid counters, who's usually <laughs> usually right. counting for us, is uh, actually, actually a, poll worker today. A, a poll worker and on the screen today, so we can monitor him from afar. <laughs> well, I know there was some some you know there was there was a little concern that there wasn't going to be enough poll workers because of the dual elections, and I know uh, the town clerk a couple of times kind of made pleas for more poll mm -hmm. workers. And uh, what she told me today was that when she made those pleas on select board meetings, et cetera, people actually responded. So she would say something at a select board meeting, and the next day, she or the next couple, within the next couple of days, she would get a number of people mm -hmm. contacting her. So, so good, good job for those of you who are volunteers, especially those of you who are 
volunteering for the first time today yes. as a poll worker. You know, thank you for, uh, for, for doing that. It makes the election run better. It makes the election run more smoothly. Um, and that's an important thing. I will say also, in addition to all of the people in the field house today, there were the street into o Oakland Road into the yes. into the high school the packed. Sign holders. Lots of people. Lots of people holding sign, trying to influence those last minute voters. Mm -hmm. Interesting that it was primarily local signs that Definitely, I saw. Yes. Very, very few uh, uh, signs for presidential candidates, and maybe there were a few that I didn't notice. It's entirely possible, but I, as I scanned it when we went by, uh, they're primarily local. Uh, signs there and, and so that's kind of interesting to see you know how that is and why that is and, and why that's happening mm -hmm. that way etc so uh, so uh, but there were a lot you know I would say more than the average local election uh, for 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 the number of sign holders even trying to get in there I always you, know, you always wonder how valuable it is to hold a sign walking into the polling place like that doesn't really change anybody's mind I don't know but it does seem kind of like a rite of passage for our local elected officials to have to do that and to, you know, especially sometimes these elections can be chilly. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. And you see true. people all bundled up yeah. in their parkas and their hats and all that. But it's kind of like a rite of passage to get out there and hold a sign, you know, as much as they possibly can on election day. And I think it's a good one. I, I think, you know, the closer the people get to their elected officials, the, the better the system works. I will say, um, too, there was, a, you mentioned at the top of the show this past week, there, there were people ha holding signs throughout Reading. And really the town common was packed yes. um, this past weekend. So, uh, and I do think that that, that um, that's also a rite of passage. Um, it and is. it was much colder this weekend. Today was a beautiful day to <laughs> yes, get out and vote. So that's was actually really lovely. Today was a great day to go lovely. out and hold a sign. Yeah. I mean, you know, beautiful it was in the upper 50s or something mm -hmm. like that today. So beautiful day, sunny, nice. I guess we had a little rain later on today. But uh, beautiful sunny day today, great day to hold a sign. But yeah, it was chilly on Saturday. There mm -hmm. were a lot of people out yeah, there, there were. supporting the candidates. And I love to see that. I love to see people out supporting the candidates that they they uh, really believe in for these various roles. Mm -hmm. And that, that's really a great thing. And it is a Reading tradition to get out there on the common for a couple of Saturdays at least before Election Day <laughs> and hold those signs and get everybody you know to do the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and honk and wave. <laughs> and honk and wave. Yeah, you know, I think it's a great thing. So we are winding down here about five minutes, a little bit, a little under six, a little under, a little over five minutes, a little under six minutes left uh, before the polls close. It looks like it may be quieting down a little bit. Uh, as we look at this, at least in this half of the uh, field house that we can see. Oh, and as I say that, there's like five people that walk in. Excellent. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. yeah and just so yeah. you know, our crew down there, our CTV crew is down there ready to get the results as they come in. Yes. Um, and they'll be feeding us those results as soon as they're available. Of course, there are no results before 8 o'clock, obviously, because the polls are still open. In a typical election, it can take 15, 20, 25 minutes to start to have some results yeah. come in from different precincts. We do report the results by precinct, generally. Yes. Um, because that's how they're reported to us. Oh, yeah, there we and go. as uh, as we said at the top of the show, we will also have the presidential uh, results as well, um, including those folks that are no longer on the ticket. Um, and uh, so th so that'll be interesting to break down uh, how Reading how, how Reading, Reading votes. Yeah, and we might need to be clear that these are Reading's votes for for the various presidential candidates. These yeah. are not statewide. If we have some statewide numbers, we will bring them in uh, if we can. But uh, these are the Democratic candidates for, for the, uh, the, pre the candidates for the Democratic nomination. And one thing I always think about with the, with the primary season, I, was in, I grew up in New Hampshire, I'm a New Hampshire kid, and so we got to vote for all the candidates typically. Very oh, few, sure. You know, they were always <laughs> around. And you knew, and, you know, nowadays, 18 months before the election, you, and my parents who still live in New Hampshire start getting phone calls and mm -hmm. start seeing signs and TV commercials and that kind of thing. I always believe with the presidential primary election, regardless of how, whether or not you think they can win the total election, you vote for the person you like the best and, and let the chips fall where they may. You know, maybe in November when there are really only generally two candidates, maybe you kind of have to hold your nose and vote for one depending on <laughs> how you feel. But, uh, but for the primary, you vote for the person that you li really like the best, even if they only get 1% of the vote. Yeah. This is the one I like. And, yeah. and, that, and, and I, that, as a New Hampshire kid, I've always done that. Yeah. You know, and, so, and I hope Reading voters do the same. Even though some of those candidates have dropped out of the race officially, I hope they really go and support the person they like, regardless of whether or not they're officially still in the race. Well, the absentee and early voters definitely will have. Absolutely. And I guess we, uh, from what we heard earlier, about 10% of the mm -hmm. yes, vote came in yeah. as early voting this year. Uh, uh, which is good because if, if getting down to the polls on election day is hard and difficult for someone, you know, being able to get to town hall last week 
and, and cast your ballot, I think is a good thing. I think, yeah. I think it's a good thing. I like the idea of early, early voting for those who have already made up their minds. My first vote was as an absentee ballot when okay. I was in college. I was so, too, actually. Yeah, yeah. My first vote was an absentee ballot as well when mm -hmm. I was in college. Yeah. Uh, my guy didn't win. Mm -hmm. My guy did. Yeah. <laughs> I voted, in, I, I was telling people before, I voted in every election I've been eligible for my entire life. When it came to the presidential primaries, I have never voted for a person that even won the nomination, let alone the presidency. Keep, keep trying. <laughs> keep, trying. <laughs> yeah, keep trying. One of these days I'm going to break yeah. through. <laughs> All right, we're going to take another quick break, and then we're going to come back uh, with Alan Folds. Uh, who to chat about uh, his moderator uh, position and hopefully have some results soon after that. Thanks very much. All right. Okay, well, welcome back to our RCTV's election coverage here on Election Night 2020 for our local elections and for our presidential primary election. And I'm joined here at RCTV's interview desk by we presume winner of the uh, role of moderator again for the 24th year. The exit polls, year. Are, polls are looking good. Everybody I talked to voted for him, which, you know, I talked to like one person, but that's, one. that's pretty much all it's going to take, right? <laughs> anyway, yeah, no, Alan has run unopposed again for uh, a moderator. We presume he's going to be elected tonight. So thank you for joining us here tonight, Alan. No, thank you. You're welcome. All right. So uh, I know I, we ask you this all the time, but I think it's important for us to try to educate people as best as we can. Uh, kind of what is the role of moderator? What is the job of moderator? There's a few things. The chief uh, duty, of course, is to preside over the town's legislature legislative body, the town mm -hmm. meeting. Right. We have an official meeting, the annual meeting in April, which could run anywhere from two to five or six nights, depending right. on what we have. The they, budget. They do the budget. The, budget, budget, yeah. the annual budget has to be done in the spring. Right. We have a second meeting called the subsequent meeting in the fall, which um, usually goes one to two nights. It usually is heavy with zoning bylaw changes. Okay. And Everyone's then, favorite thing. Everyone's favorite <laughs> thing, yeah. <laughs> and uh, then, of course, the uh, select board could call a special one whenever it's needed, or any sure. 200 citizens good too. And what types of things might people call a special town meeting for? Oh, it might be um, uh, somebody wants to get something rezoned and the, the select board may be not in favor of it or at least does not want to uh, officially take a stand. Okay. So a group of citizens might decide we're going to go ahead with it. Sure, sure. And how about, you know, what are some reasons in the past several years maybe that the select board has called for a, a special town meeting? Um, the, the uh, most common reason has been something was too late to put in the annual uh, okay. uh, warrant, so they have a special meeting within the annual meetings. It okay. might be like a 10-minute meeting. could be a one-night okay. meeting. Okay. And then um, uh, I'm sure we've had other ones along the way, too, yeah, during seem, the year. I seem yeah. to recall a few. I seem to recall uh, when we did the senior tax relief that there was a special that's town right, meeting That's right. That's a good example. Yep. That. I think the select yes. board called that. I also th I'm remembering, I could be wrong about this, is I think when we voted for the library funding, I believe that was a special town meeting. Yep. One of them was. I think sure, we had two, yeah. two meetings, but I think one of them was a special town meeting had to be called. Well, that's kind of interesting. So, you know, we talk about town meeting. You always refer to town meeting as the legislative body. Uh, what, what is the role of the average town meeting member? Um, to to uh, show up, to um, make motions or uh, seconds if they are so inclined, to deliberate, to discuss, to, to uh, debate, and ultimately to vote. Yeah. So what do you think about the fact that maybe town meeting doesn't always seem to have a full complement in some of these elections? Uh, well, it always works, and I wish we did have more people running for it. But uh, like this, this ballot, we have, uh, I think we have one uh, contested race. Yeah, I think it's mm -hmm. Precinct 7. Then we have a couple that have a full slate, then a couple that need one or two people. And usually uh, write-in candidates come along. Somebody right. who just didn't get around to getting the 10 signatures, or maybe right. at the last minute they decided, hey, I could add to that. Sure. So it always fills in. It always fills in. Yes. And how many members are there at town 192. meeting? 192. 192. And what constitutes a quorum of town meeting? Uh, uh, 97. Just so over half. Just over half. Yeah. Just over half. Okay. And so town meeting usually runs a couple nights, a couple times a year, so it's not a huge commitment? I'm guessing between six and eight nights a year. Okay. Uh, the annual meeting may go four nights. The, the subsequent might go two. And if we have a, a special or two, it, it couldn't put the numbers up a Sure, bit. sure. And oftentimes those town meeting members will, will go through the warrant and kind of look through it ahead of time so they know what's coming. Absolutely. That's a great idea if to, to do that. It, it makes things run smoother if you have a good idea what the, the, the articles are about. Sure, sure. So in your role of moderator, you run the town meeting, and you uh, is there anything else that you do in that role? Um, well, in that, as, as moderator, I also am head of the appointing authority for the uh, okay. Finance Committee and the Bylaw Committee. Okay. Both of them are advisory committees to town meetings, sure. so it makes sense. Sure, sure. 
So you're part of that as well. Yes. And, and, and right. Sometimes you're called in to do special meetings. Yes. With the yeah. Yeah. Select board. Yep, I was involved in the select board this in, this in, month. Yes. So that, yeah. that was good. That's kind of a rarity. <laughs> now I know also kind of looking back over the past year, this has nothing to do with being moderator. Just as a citizen, you were part of the Reading 375th uh, committee. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I know that went really well, and people uh, really enjoyed that. But my understanding is, is there some kind of um, kind of continuance of that coming this year. Right, we had such a good time. A lot of people wanted to keep at least a few of the uh, events going. We're not trying to recreate the 375th, sure, of course, sure. but Porch Fest was spectacular. It just came off so well. Everybody right. enjoyed it, so we decided we're going to go ahead and do it again. The uh, Art Walk is coming back. It's called okay. Draw 2020, Downtown Reading Art Walk. Okay. Uh, and then we've also combined with the, the annual Friends and Family Day and the Friends of Reading Recreation Fireworks. Uh -huh. Uh, and also, um, James for Jake's is Jake. Oh, James, James for Jake, for Jake, is, Jake right. is joining that time period. Oh, so okay. we're going to concentrate things into a uh, late spring event. We're calling it Hometown Days. Hometown Days. Okay. And if someone had uh, interest in that or wanted to know more about it, is there a website or someplace they could go? Um, well, if this selection were not on tonight, I'd probably be home working on it. <laughs> we are building a site that will. You're be building a site. Yeah. Okay. It, Do you know it, what this address is going to yes, be? Yes, it'll yeah. be hometown. 01867.com. Okay, hometown zero, but it's not ready yet. <laughs> it's not quite ready yet. You, you might get some junk out there if you look now, but it's, <laughs> we're still working on it. It should be up within a few days. Okay, so. okay. And then Porch Fest will have its own too. Ready, okay. Reading Porch Fest. So, that, so Porch Fest is going to be separate from the other things. Well, it's, it's part of it, and you'll be able to get to it from hometown. Okay, days, okay. Just like good. all of the other events, but uh, I'm also. In addition to being involved with Hometown Days, I'm specifically involved in Porch Fest. So, okay. so my right. wife and I have got uh, website duties. All right, very good, very good. Well, thank you for coming in and sharing a little bit uh, with us today. Alan, congratulations on your presumed <laughs> election you. to town moderator. We look forward to seeing you at town meeting, if not sooner. Um, and uh, th thank you for sharing a little bit about uh, Hometown Hometown Days, hometown hometown days. 8018670.com. All right, excellent, all right. We're going to uh, take this back and go back to Katie at our election desk. Katie? It's good to see you again. <laughs> uh, so it is just a few minutes now past 8 o'clock. Uh, as you saw down at the field house, they're just packing up their precinct signs and, um, and uh, getting ready to wrap up um, the setup down there and hopefully get results uh, to our crew soon. Um, you, as, uh, as Kevin said, it's usually you know, 15, 20 minutes or so uh, until uh, we get results back. So we'll, uh, we'll bring those to you as soon as we have them. Um, you can see them wrapping up there. Uh, I will just take this opportunity, uh, as Alan gave a, a quick brief uh, plug for Hometown Days, I'll give a quick brief plug for RCTV. So uh, we would love you to sign up for 2020 summer workshops. Registration is now available for two-day, three-day, and week-long sessions uh, with topics like acting, photography, and video production, uh, as well as the popular screenplay program where students uh, pr uh, act and crew a full-length uh, movie, which then has a has a really lovely screening event at at the studio. Um, they write that movie also. Yes, they do. Yeah, um, so that's really wonderful. Um, more information about summer workshops can be found at rctv.org. Um, and I will say that the website is currently down, which some folks might have had might have noticed earlier today with uh, the Reading Post as well. Yeah, I think the RCTV website is back now. Um, there was some problems with the Reading Post website also, basically the RCTV uh, website and the Reading Post. Web, Reading Post is up now again. Okay, good. Uh, apparently, apparently both websites use the same uh, host company yeah. and uh, they were doing some standard maintenance on that and when they I went to bring those websites back after their standard maintenance, apparently particularly with the Reading Post, uh, there was uh, some kind of problem that the uh, files had, that are on that website, I, I know nothing about websites, but uh, <laughs> were corrupted somehow, and so it took almost the entire day to get that up. For, for those of you who are conspiracy people who think that was taken down right before the election for some kind of nefarious purpose, the, the, the truth couldn't be farther from that. It we're was, not that exciting, We're not that exciting, and, and quite it's honestly, really we're not that uh, capable. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, yeah, that, those, but I believe those websites are back up now, including all the letters to the editor, and of course, the results of this election will be posted on on the uh, readingpost.com um, as we get them this evening. Yes, <laughs> uh, yes. So, um, so. 
RCTV summer workshops can, are open for registration and, and can be seen on the website now that it's back now up. Now that it's back up. <laughs> I've seen them do these workshops. They're really fantastic. Yeah. Some, of, you know, some of the stuff that the kids come up yeah. with and some of the ideas they have are really, really clever and, yeah. and really created um, about, uh, about uh, you know, all sorts of things. And, it, and the things yeah. kind of come up with some of that stuff. So anyway. Um, so, Kevin, can you explain uh, your role with the Reading Post? Sure. <laughs> um, uh, for those of you who don't know, the, the Reading Post is an online newspaper, uh, which is really kind of hyper local to Reading. We generally don't cover really anything that comes outside of Reading unless it has some direct impact on Reading. And uh, it, it is what we do. What I do is is I cover uh, local meetings. So I I cover the select board. I cover the school committee. I cover the zoning board of appeals and the um, uh, uh, Community Planning and Development Commission. Mm -hmm. Occasionally I cover uh, um, the Health Board Town Meeting. Finance, um, I believe, too. What's that? Finance. Finance yeah. Committee. Yes, yeah. it's hard to remember. Yeah, and, 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 <laughs> there's and a our lot. Really, really our goal is to try to provide a news source for Reading that is unbi as unbiased as we possibly can be, really to relate um, what happened at these meetings so the public can be informed about what their local town government is doing. It's really, uh, I think, important to try to have as many resources as possible, as many points of view as possible as what's happening in town meeting, or not ta just town meeting, but in the town in general, and specifically in town government. And so, uh, you know, I I'll watch the meetings and I'll, I'll put them up and uh, put up articles and, and uh, hopefully people are, are, are getting informed of what's happening in town. Yes, and I will say the, the current front page of the Reading Post is almost exclusively letters to the editor. <laughs> um, well, that, that's, that uh, that, that's not uh, a comment on, on uh, <laughs> Kevin's writing ability, um, but it is a comment on how, um, how local folks are interested in what's happening sure. in Reading and want to voice their opinions, um, especially coming up to this important election. Yeah, and the Reading Post does accept letters to the editor on mm -hmm. any topic that someone would want to write a letter to the editor on. Um, tip, what we ask is that it's sent to, I think it's editor at thereadingpost.com, and letters have to be signed. Yeah. And uh, we, will, we don't guarantee we're going to post every letter. Uh, obviously, we try to. We try to post as many as we can, and we try to uh, put as many viewpoints in as we possibly can. Um, but uh, sometimes people try to send unsigned letters and that kind of thing, and those don't, don't get posted. You know, mm -hmm. We want you to identify yourself. If you really held to an opinion that strongly, you know, identify yourself yeah. and and, uh, and and let it, let it be there. But yeah, that it, it kind of does show a little bit about what this election has been about with mm -hmm. the number of letters to the editor this time around. That, that I mean, I don't have an official count, but it had to have been 20, 25 yeah. of them at least uh, this time around. And that we usually get you know a dozen or so for for our local election. So I would say this is probably you know, almost double what we typically get for a local election. Um, in regards to letters to the editor, yeah. so it does show you know I think an, an, an increased amount of interest in this election. So we're at just about 10, 12 minutes past eight here. Uh, we can see with our view from the to the field house right now that it's pretty empty. They're, they're emptying out. They're getting ready to, um, I'm sure they're working very hard uh, getting the numbers out from uh, the various ballot machines um, and uh, wrapping up all of their processes. So we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we'll come back hopefully with some results um, as soon as we have them. You're watching RCTV. Hello, I'm back here at the uh, interview table with Karen. Gately Herrick, who is a candidate for the Board of Selectmen, or excuse me, the Select Board. Select Board. Select Board, got to remember that. After years and years and years of one thing, shifting to another thing is difficult. Um, how was your day today? Our day was fabulous. March 3rd, and it's a balmy 64 degrees. It was <laughs> fabulous. So how long were you out there holding signs today? Um, 7 to 7.20. So uh, I had an hour break. Like okay. 11, 12 hours. Wow, wow. That, that, we were just saying at the election desk that it's really a rite of passage for candidates in Reading to, to go out there and hold their signs and, and, and all of that. I presume you had supporters out there with you today as well. Yes, and they were happy to help on a day like this. Right, sure. sure. And now did you were you out on the common on Saturday? 
Saturday as well? Stop. Yes. Okay. And how did that go? And it was a little chillier that day. It was <laughs> yeah, a little chillier, better than I think February 4th when, you know, it was just like, is it 12 yet? It was yeah. Super cold. <laughs> so, <laughs> what are you hearing about election returns thus far? Are you hearing anything yet? I know I'm hearing not... really big numbers. Really big numbers, I yeah. I have never seen such a volume of cars coming through all day long. So, right. I'm pretty excited. Reading has voted. So and, that's, and that's great. And that's good to hear. We were talking about that at the election desk a little earlier. You know, a few months ago, the select board made the decision to hold the local election on the primary day for that purpose is to get people out. And we were hearing that a couple of precincts ran out of ballots, not fully, wow. but uh, the town clerk had given each precinct 50 percent of their ballots. So at least a that's couple exciting. of precincts had more than 50 percent show up. Of course, they got new ones as soon as they ran out. But but uh, that's really exciting. It is really exciting. That's so you were marvelous. there all day and you saw a steady stream of cars? Oh, yeah. I'd say from one to two, there was a slight lull. We ordered pizza. But other than that, <laughs> I've never seen such volume. It was okay. amazing. Excellent. Excellent. So how has the rest of the campaign gone? I mean, I know you've been kind of at this since the end of last year a little bit. How, well, tell me a little bit what it's like to be a candidate for office in Reading. Well, it's been terrific. Um, partly the weather's been super cooperative. We mm -hmm. haven't had to dig our signs out from under snow banks, which was <laughs> nice. Um, and in think general, compared to other elections, I am seeing lots of age groups very engaged. Oh, and sometimes you don't see that. So as I've been door knocking, you know, people want to know who's coming to my door. What are you, what are you thinking about for Reading? Mm -hmm. Same um, visiting the schools. The parents are like, Oh, you're running for the select board. It's a local election. Yes, give me one of those cards. I need to know who's running. So that's okay. really, Good. I'm excited to see that. Good. What kinds of questions are people asking you about kind of you, what you anticipate your role being if you were to win tonight? Hmm. Well, we're still getting some questions about, you know, um, so related to the the police chief appointment, sure. you know, congratulations to Police Chief Clark. Yeah. And it's a good place for us to move forward. But questions about, you know, you know, there still seems to be some um, not perfect harmony in town. So mm. will you be working to put um, Reading back together? And, okay. and absolutely. And I think other, I'm sure other candidates are looking are at that too. Seeing that also. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, if you were to win, you'll be joining the select board in a few weeks. What types of things would you like to work on if you were to win tonight? Oh, clean and green energy. Clean oh, green yes. Energy. In fact, I was at the... Um, RMLD meeting the other night. They have sent out an RFP to their four towns. They have selected locations in each town okay. where they think there would be a great place for solar panels. Okay, so excellent. that's a really exciting update excellent. from them. Wow, yeah. excellent, excellent. So that's that's an exciting initiative for town and mm -hmm. hopefully uh, kind of transform our, our uh, obsession with fossil fuels into something yeah. a, a little different. Excellent. So uh, what are your plans for the rest of the evening here? I know you could be watching RCTV for returns, but uh, anything else going on? Well, I just dropped off a number of bottles of chilled wine <laughs> and I'll be joining folks over there and um, we'll be celebrating like 64 degrees and this great <laughs> democratic process absolutely you're welcome to join us <laughs> well thank you thank you well i love it when we have a large turnout i've said it numerous times tonight already but uh democracy works best when everybody participates and, yeah. and so that's very good well i thank you for being thank here you. tonight and sharing a few awesome. minutes i nice especially thank you for throwing your hat in the ring <laughs> and being willing to serve uh, when we have people qualified good people who are willing to serve it makes all of our lives better in town so i thank you for, it's been for doing fun. that thank all right you. all right well thank you for being here again and I think we're going to turn it over to Katie over at the election desk is that correct yeah. all right thanks so much Kevin uh, so I'm here with Carla Nazaro who's a candidate for school committee thank you so much for coming down to the studio tonight thank you for having me how how has your first election process gone <laughs> it was um, it was very interesting it was very exciting um, I got a lot of wonderful support from people um, people are really engaged in Reading, um, I feel good about it. It was it was a fun process. Good, good. So you'd recommend it to others? If, if Absolutely. Oh, <laughs> Everybody should try it. That's good. <laughs> uh, and how was your day today? Uh, we just heard uh, um, Karen talking about how lovely the weather has been, how that's helped out a lot. But uh, how, how did your day go? We had the most beautiful weather. We had a wonderful day. Um, there was a lot of energy. There was a lot of support. Um, tons of people walking by just a I met even more people today so it was a fabulous day Great. yeah uh, and so if you do get elected tonight and we do hear that numbers are coming in uh, shortly so hopefully we'll have um, some results come in soon but if you do get elected what are you most excited about working on I I'm I'm excited almost for new beginnings mm -hmm. um, I'm excited to you know our 
our campaign so far had, was it was a wonderful process. Um, Erin and Megan and Sean were all stand-up um, competitors. It was a fabulous process. Um, I'm looking forward to working with some of them. Unfortunately, not all of us. Um, I'm looking forward to working with um, with Chuck and Tom and John as well, as well as the superintendent. It was um, it. it Looking forward to new beginnings. Great. Yeah. Um, and so, what was the most surprising part of this process? I'm always interested in what what you didn't expect um, as a candidate. So, not being a political person and being someone who never expected to be involved with a campaign, never thought I would do something like this. Um, I I was ha really happy with the process. I I found that there were a lot of out external political distractions mm -hmm. in the town. Um, I encourage everybody on every board to speak their mind, but do it respectfully. Um, and I really hope that um, people trust the new school committee and trust that we are going to do what's best for students. And I, um, I hope and I pray that people are kind to one another and um, generous and give us some time to make some, to make some progress and mm -hmm. some change. And so I'm sure you had multiple, m many supporters with you today and yes. throughout this process. Is there anything you'd like to say to, to the folks that helped you get here today? <laughs> I had the A team, and I told them that all the time. I had, um, I, I was told by someone um, the best piece of advice I got was um, you need to outwork everybody. Mm -hmm. And I feel like our campaign was run um, really well, very above board. Um, we had an excitement throughout the campaign. People worked really hard, and I had a really talented group of people. So um, it was fun. It was stressful. It was um, a little bit of everything, and I feel really good about what we did. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming down tonight. Uh, good luck. The polls have now closed for about 20 minutes, so you. Um, you can take a deep sigh. <laughs> <laughs> the campaigning is over, at Great. least. Um, and hopefully we'll have some results for you soon. So Thank um, you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so you. much for coming down tonight. Thank you. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back after this. Welcome back to RCTV's March 3rd, 2020 coverage of the local and presidential election. Again, I'm Katie Robertson. This is Kevin Bent. Uh, we've had some chats with Alan Folds, Carla Nazaro, and Karen Gately Herrick. So thank you very much very to much. those three uh, for coming down to the studio tonight. And you know, I, I mentioned this with with Karen when I spoke with her, but I, I'm always uh, impressed by people who, who are willing to even just throw their hat in the ring and say, "Let's let's do this." I, I think I have something to offer. And uh, you know, running a campaign even on a local level is not an easy thing to do. You know, you you invest a lot of your own money as well as your own time and effort, and of course, a lot of your own nerves are, are, are in that, weekends. especially tonight, <laughs> yeah. weekends and and evenings, and trying to get up to speed on some of the issues. And and you have the issues you care about, and the issues maybe you didn't know about ahead of time before you got into it, and 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 get ready and I'm really impressed with people who are who are saying I, I love my community so much I want to do the best I can for it regardless of whether they win or lose each one of them you know is is, is admirable and yeah. so it, it's great to uh, to have them here and, and especially you know we had uh, Karen and Carla and, and Alan and, and it is great to, to speak with them and then have them uh, kind of share a little bit about that process yeah. <laughs> and I do think we have some early uh, results um, from a couple of precincts so uh, let's take a look here. Um, select board for three years in Precinct 4, Andrew Friedman with 424 votes, Carlo Bacci with 667 votes, Karen Gately Herrick with 515 votes, and writing candidates with 352 votes. And we would point out that these numbers are unofficial until they are actually approved by the town clerk, but this is what we're getting from the um, field house at this moment. We would also point out we talked about the writing campaign mm -hmm. before, and there is a significant writing campaign for John Halsey, but that does not mean that John Halsey got these 352 votes. Um, there could be other writing candidates. We have to wait and see until those uh, votes are actually counted. And this particular race, we're voting for two people. So uh, the top two vote getters, which uh, based on this slide would be Carlo and Karen. 
Uh, so Precinct 8, the same list of candidates, uh, Friedman with 314 votes, Bocce with 688, Gately Herrick with 503, and write-in votes for 420. Very interesting so far. Very similar, actually. Very similar, very <laughs> similar, yeah. Um, okay, so, so, so that's, that's, that's what we got. <laughs> that's what we got. All right, excellent. Okay, well, at least we know well, a few it's things. it's a good start. <laughs> it's a good start. I know we're working hard to get some of those other numbers up there mm -hmm. with, the, with the school committee as well. And, of course, the uh, municipal light board also is a contested race. We don't want to forget that. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we do, and we don't <laughs> want to. You know, again, those candidates have worked hard to yes. get to this point. Um, so I would just point out to you as we're, as we're doing this right now, um, uh, Joe Biden has a three-point lead statewide. Okay. <laughs> we will be bringing you uh, uh, presidential numbers, uh, presidential primary numbers from Reading also, but I'm kind of tracking some of the statewide stuff. By the way, that's with only 1.3% uh, of the precincts reporting <laughs> in the state, so I think it's, we got a long way to go on that one. So we also have numbers up now from Precinct 4 for the school committee for the three-year positions, uh, again, which are two positions. So Megan fiddler Carey has 414, Aaron Gaffin, 600. 136 and Carla Nazaro who I just spoke with 685 okay so again that would be Carla and Aaron Carla and Aaron all right there we go so interesting very close between Carla and Aaron yes. there in precinct uh, four in terms of the number of total number of votes mm -hmm. only you know sometimes people say is it really worth voting I've always believed that in local elections you know voting is significant because yeah. it can only be a few votes that separate and here are some numbers from precinct eight for school committee the three-year seat uh, we have Megan Fiddler Carey with 381 votes Aaron Gaffin with 557 votes and Carla Nazaro with 640 votes uh, again Again, this is the unofficial totals for Precinct 8 uh, and the school committee. And this is the three-year seat on the school committee, which, again, as you pointed out with the select board, there are two seats available uh, on the school committee for three years at this point. So we're, we're voting for basically the top two of these, of these candidates at this point. And we are getting numbers in um, as, the, as time goes by very quickly. So uh, here's Precinct 3 uh, for the same slate of candidates. Megan fiddler Carey with 347, Erin Gaffin with 598, and Carla Nazaro with 791. Uh, so that's a that's a pretty commanding lead. That's that, the largest number we've seen. That's so far that tonight. is the that is the largest number we've seen thus far this night, uh, tonight. And, and for school committee, actually in any of the school committee or the select board, mm -hmm. that's the largest number that we have seen. So it's interesting here. When, you know, looking at this, you got about twelve hundred, close yeah. to thirteen hundred votes just in precinct uh, three for school committee. So that you know we were talking about turnout earlier. That bodes well for the the level of turnout with the thirteen hundred votes just in that one yeah. precinct for school committee. Here we have the Precinct 4 numbers for school committee. Uh, again, the three-year seat, Megan fiddler Carey with 414 votes. Uh, Aaron Gaffin with 300, excuse me, 636 votes. And Carla Nazaro with 685 votes uh, for Precinct 4, the, the, the three-year seat on the school committee. So... Things are progressing. It it's amazing. Fast, it, happens, it, happens. <laughs> it happens fast. It happens fast. <laughs> so here we are with Precinct 8, uh, which I believe we, we did once before, but we'll do it again. Um, Megan fiddler Carey, 381. Erin Gaffin, 557. And Carla Nazaro, 640. So I would say um, out of the four precincts we've seen so far, three or three precincts, four precincts, three, four, five, and eight. Uh, it looks like Carla and Erin are the front uh, runners. Are the front runners, yeah. So unless something you know happens quickly there. So here we have precinct five numbers. This is the three year seats on the select board, and again, this is a uh, two seats out of uh, um, that are being elected here. Andrew Friedman has three hundred and eighty eight votes. Carlo Bacci five hundred and ninety one. Karen Gately Herrick five hundred and forty five. And there were two hundred and sixty three write in votes. Uh, again, these are unofficial official numbers and as we mentioned before um, just because there are 263 written votes doesn't mean all those written votes are for the particular writing candidate and this is one of the first years we've had a uh, write-in as as an option on our our polling uh, yeah yeah usually results. usually we don't because there isn't an official campaign for mm -hmm. write-in um, so be, you know we don't normally include it because people write in all sorts of crazy mm -hmm. things they'll write in <laughs> Mickey Mouse and Superman yeah. and, and what have you because they're not happy with the with the slate of candidates but you know this time there was a specific write-in campaign so we have uh, precinct three numbers for the select board here and we have uh, Andrew Friedman with 309 97 votes. Carlo Bacci with 732. That's a big number. Uh, Karen Gately Herrick with 525 and 300 write in votes. 
So again, out of those uh, four precincts we've seen so far, which is three, four, five, and eight, it looks like Carlo Barchi and uh, Karen Gately Herrick are in the lead. Yeah, so interesting, interesting, interesting things happening here. Yeah. And again, you know, just looking at this, you know, you were looking at close to 1,800 votes just in that one mm -hmm. precinct, maybe a little over 1,800 votes in that one precinct uh, for uh, for select board. So, I mean, that bodes well again for, for voter mm -hmm. turnout. I mean, I've said that several times, yeah. but uh, I think that's really true. So. So interesting uh, this yeah, far. Yeah, and we've had, uh, as you mentioned before, we've we've had some numbers for previous voter turnout, and you know, one year that we looked at recently, I think it was 2015, had about 11 percent. Yes, so, yes. Um, I think we've we've definitely blown that out of the water this year, which is wonderful. Um, and obviously, that being tied in with the presidential election helps that a lot. But sure. I also think that. Um, the the electorate seems more involved this year i think i think there has been a lot the electorate's a little supercharged this year <laughs> <laughs> i would definitely go with that uh so going through again precinct three for school committee uh choose two for a three-year seat megan fiddler carry 347 aaron gaffin 598 and carla nazaro 791. precinct four megan fiddler carry 414 aaron gaffin 636 Carla Nazaro, 685. That's one of them we had earlier where those votes are really close. Uh, speaking of close, we have uh, Precinct 5 numbers for the school committee. We have Megan fiddler Carey with 432 votes, Aaron Gaffin with 592, and Carla Nazaro with 582. Yes. So do you think your vote doesn't matter? <laughs> there yeah. we go, 10 votes. Uh, and then Precinct 8, uh, Megan fiddler Carey, 381 votes. Erin Gaffin, 557 votes, and Carla Nazaro, 640 votes. So again, that's four out of eight precincts reporting for that, um, for that race. So here we have uh, precinct three votes uh, for the select board. For a three-year seat, it's vote for two. Andrew Friedman has 397. Carlo Bacci, 732. Karen Gately Herrick, 525. And the writing candidates, uh, 300. So that's a commanding lead for Carlo. Yeah. In Precinct 4, the same slate, Friedman has 424. Bacci, 667. Gately Herrick, 515. And write-ins were 352. Precinct 5, uh, reporting in, we have uh, Andrew Friedman with 388 votes, Carlo Bacci with 591, Karen Gately Herrick with 545, and 263 write-in ballots. Precinct 8, we have 314 votes for Andrew Friedman, we have 688 votes for Carlo Bacci, 503 votes for Karen Gately Herrick and 420 write in votes. So, again, you know, we're looking at that, we're close to 1,900 votes in, in uh, Precinct 8 for Select Board. That's look, looking really good. And it is interesting with a coordinated um, writing campaign. It, they seem to be falling behind the other candidates, but it's significant. Yeah. It's a significant it's number of write-in votes. It's not yeah. far behind uh, the, the, uh, the uh, we'll call them declared candidates. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it doesn't look like at this point, unless something changes in those other precincts, that the writing candidates are necessarily going to um, be elected. But it, it's significant that the number of votes that were cast, I think, and I think that's important to, to show how, how uh, some of the turmoil in the town over the last few weeks has affected this election. And as you've mentioned, these results are unofficial, so um, we will have to wait and for a few days probably until all of the write-in ballots are um, noted and the town clerk, Laura Jem, is able to solidify the results. Sure, we as, we, as we had mentioned before, uh, the uh, write-in ballots, because you don't know who they are for necessarily, they actually have to be gone through by hand and totaled by hand. And why does that take till Thursday, you ask? Good question. I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Laura Jem, the town clerk, told us that actually uh, she's required to do the presidential write-in ballots first. So on the presidential, de uh, on the Democrat, well, actually both on the Democratic and the Republican side, there is actually a no preference option available where people can, and then there's also a write-in option. Um, so on the write-in option, the presidential, again, people use them and they write in all sorts of crazy things, or they might write in someone that they genuinely want to, to vote for who didn't make the ballot for some reason. And those have to be totaled first um, by the town clerk, and that's why it will, could take until Thursday to get the write-in votes um, you know, fully uh, analyzed and, 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 and affirmed. 
So I do uh, have some information coming from the field house that there uh, is some issues with the tapes down in the field house. Okay. And so results may be delayed at this point. Um, I will say that our um, crack team of counters has <laughs> done some quick math here. Um, and it does look to me like uh, Carlo and Karen Gately Herrick are very close. If uh, I'm sorry, Carla. Nazaro right. and Aaron Gaffin are very close uh, okay. together for the school committee uh, for the four precincts that we've seen so far. Um, and then uh, let's see if I can find the there it is. And then for the four precincts so far, it looks like um, as we've said, Carlo and Karen Gately Herrick are in seem, uh, seem to have, have a lead. lead. Seem yeah. to have a lead. Yeah. So I mean, again, anything can happen in the other four precincts. Mm -hmm. We're not certainly calling anything Absolutely. by any stretch of the imagination, um, but because uh, you never know what could happen in some of those other precincts. Um, what do you think about the presidential primary in Reading? Any any feel or thoughts on how, uh, how Reading is going to vote in the presidential primary? I don't know. Um, I haven't seen as many signs for presidential candidates yeah. as I have for the local candidates, which that, I think is interesting. That was absolutely my observation. Again, you know, just riding around town over the last couple of days, you know, there are virtually no signs for presidential candidates, mm -hmm. a few here and yeah. there. But, but really, it's the local election that seems to have captured everybody's yeah. attention this year. Um, though I think in the long run, when we, fi when we find out uh, voter turnout numbers, my guess is, is more people will still vote in the presidential primary than will vote in the local election. But when we were looking at that earlier today, it was very close. It, it was, was within 1% yeah. difference yeah. or even less than that, like yeah. a half a percent difference, slightly half a percent more for the presidential, but very, very close. Mm -hmm. um, so there probably will be a few more people who will vote in that than will vote in the local. But, but engaging interest based on, on political signs around town, it doesn't seem as though people are – as invested in the presidential primary? I'm, I'm not sure. Not I don't, yet, I'm, I don't know how to interpret yeah. that. You know, maybe, I think in the general election, I think we'll definitely see sure. presidential signs all over the place like we typically do, you know, through October and November, uh, or at least after the conventions this summer. But uh, but it's very interesting to me that, you know, with a, with a some ways wide open presidential primary on the Democratic mm -hmm. side, at least, um, not, a, not a lot of signs. Yeah. Not, not a lot of people expressing their opinion. And maybe, I don't know if that's indicative, again, of the interest in the local election or if it's indicative of people being a little timid about their presidential choices after the last few years. Or maybe just waiting. So many candidates have backed out. Um, in, True. in recent days, even, um, that maybe folks are just waiting until a nominee um, is is chosen. Yeah, and I was a little surprised, quite honestly. I I told a lot of people over the last few days that I, after the South Carolina primary, I ex didn't expect anybody to drop out yeah. after South I Carolina. Didn't I didn't expect anyone to expect, drop before Super Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, it was only two <laughs> days away. You know, you, you, you mo probably have the money to run two days two of days. campaign. You know, uh, and, and then the number of, of candidates, well, three of them, yeah. you know, in the Democratic uh, 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 nominating process dropped out in the last couple of days, and I was really surprised by that, uh, given that they're already on the ballots, they've already done all the campaigning, it's pretty much a done deal in terms of the Super Tuesday vote, and yet they choose to drop out, and it makes me wonder, and I'm totally speculating about this, <laughs> if there has been some pressure from 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 higher ups in the Democratic Party to try to coalesce around just one or two mm -hmm. candidates to try to get a real feel for what their nominating process is going to be come this summer. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I was genuinely surprised uh, by that. By the way, with uh, 3.64 precincts reporting on statewide, Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders are in a virtual statistical tie at 31%. <laughs> so whatever that means, I don't well, know what that with, means. With, yeah, less than 4% of the votes in. Right. I bet there, there's room for yep. interpretation Oh, what, it just there. changed again? <laughs> and now Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders are in a virtual tie and Joe Biden has dropped. <laughs> Breaking news, breaking news. By the way, Middlesex County is voting for uh, Elizabeth Warren at this oh, point. Oh, okay. Which is interesting. I don't know if that will reflect itself in Reading's numbers. Yeah, but, that'll be interesting. But Middlesex actually. County, at least thus far, is going for Elizabeth Warren. Mm -hmm. and the hometown they, girl. The hometown girl. The hometown <laughs> girl, that's right. All right, we're going to take a quick break here uh, while we get some more numbers in, uh, and we will be back uh, when, we're, when we have some more results to share. So we're back here at RCTV uh, for the March 3rd, 2020 local and presidential election. Uh, we have reported uh, about half of the precincts um, with results for the select board and the school committee. We have gotten information that there have been some issues with counting down at the polls. Uh, essentially, 
the machines uh, which take the ballots at the end of the precincts may have had issues uh, with being identified for presidential or local and might have been switched. So they're causing some counting issues. So we'll come to results as soon as we can. In the meantime, we have Kevin Vent and Carlo Bacci over at the interview desk. Kevin, take it away. All right, thank you, Katie. I'm here with Carlo Bacci, who is one of the candidates for Select Board. Nice to have you here tonight, Mr. Bacci. Thank you, thank you. So uh, we can't report anything official, obviously. Sure. We only have about half of the precincts uh, tallied it thus far, but okay. at least thus far it's looking good for your election okay. to the Select Board. So yeah. uh, I guess, uh, do you have any reaction to that? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Live TV, sorry. Oh. My bad. Um, yeah, I just, I, I don't know what the outcome is going to be. Sure. But I just want to thank, I'm looking at you, sorry. Uh, I want to thank all the voters. Thank my campaign staff, thank my family, thank my wife, thank anyone that contributed to my campaign, anyone who hosted a lawn sign, and just, you know, thank you. I mean, I can't say anything more. Sure, sure. So it's been it's been an exciting campaign yes, this year. Yes, yes. Uh, anything maybe you could share that you've learned about running for office this time? Well, I think a lot of people care about the town, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, myself, uh, Nathan Giacalone, my campaign manager, and my family, we literally walked about 85, 90% of the town. Sure. And even though it's winter, talked to a lot of people, and they just were talking about parking, talking about the construction, and just talking about other issues, and people care about the town. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of great volunteers in town, and I, I want to be part of that, and, and hopefully uh, that will happen. Sure. Okay. So as you talk to people, what do you think people's number one issue is as you've been talking to people? It, it, or is it a mix of things? It was a mix of things, but the number one thing, honestly, was the construction. Like, okay. Reading is changing. Sure. And I was trying to explain to them, yes, Reading is changing and Reading is growing. Mm -hmm. So we have to manage that change, manage that growth. Okay. Sure. And being a small right. business owner okay. and having a lot of experience with small businesses and, and, and just having employees and just – Good at operations, I think uh, I will be a, a good addition to the board if elected. Okay, good, good. So uh, you've been uh, uh, campaigning hard this this yes, year, yes. and you, were you out uh, you know, holding signs at the uh, yeah, election? Yeah, yeah, I was there at 6 a.m. Okay. Today, setting up uh, with some tents uh, just okay. to make sure. Some and then it was a 13 hour day. Sure. You know, but the rain came in at the end, but that was okay. And uh, it was a very great day, a lot of, a lot of people. A lot of support, mm -hmm. and um, I couldn't ask for anything more. So, how was that process of holding signs? Is it, is, was it fun, or was it? Well, it's a camaraderie type thing. I mean, sure. we're all out there. You know, I'm friendly with some of the other candidates, and we just—it's it's kind of a party in, sure. in a sense, sure. you know, sure. good or bad. Right. It's kind of a party, so right. it's nice. I always think of it as a rite of passage for candidates in Reading to have yeah, to yeah, have to put yeah. in their day out there. Yeah, yeah. You know, thank you, Mother Nature. Mother Nature yeah. really helped today. Yeah. Um, you know, it was it was a beautiful day. And you were out on Saturday also over on the Common. Actually, the last yes. couple Saturdays you've been out yes, on the Common. Yes, yes, the past three Saturdays, a lot of support there. Um, it's a tradition, as you know, to yep. be on the Common and uh, did it. A lot of people came out, a lot of people I didn't know okay. came out. A lot of support this year that wasn't there last year. So, you know, thank you to everyone, honestly. Sure, sure, sure. Well, it, it's been, in the, as I said, an active campaign season, and I think uh, my sense is, is that the electorate is really engaged this time, probably more so than it's been in recent memory, uh, to, to uh, the local election. Do you think having the election on the presidential primary helped with some of the turnout today? I think that's part of it. I think a lot of the uh, people that voted today um, are, are more engaged, I would say, mm -hmm. in local politics. I mean, we want to keep local politics local. Sure. So I think... I've been doing this for a couple months now, and I ran last year. And the difference this year, yes, was the primary. Uh, you know, it wasn't an override. It wasn't right. really anything major. Right. Just a presidential primary, and that brought a lot of people out. I understand. I know it's not final, but the turnout was very high. Sure. For local, which is great. Mm -hmm. That means people are paying attention. People are engaged. Right. And, and maybe people want change. I really, I really don't know. Sure, sure. Well, it's been an exciting election day thus far and lots of things going on. And I thank you for coming here and uh, oh, sharing you. some of your experience. And we look forward to seeing the rest of the returns yeah. uh, come in. And uh, maybe you'll be, we'll be seeing you on the select board in the future. And, yeah, you uh, never know. You best never of know. luck to you as, as we continue on. Thank you. All right, appreciate thank it. you very much. Thank you. I think you. we're going to uh, head back over to Katie at the election desk for some more clarification of what's going on down at the field house. So we just had some whirlwind conversations about what's going on uh, down, at the, uh, down in the field house 
House, uh, and I was able to get some clarification uh, with, and I do have an example uh, for what happened. So essentially, um, there were some ballots that went into the wrong machines down at the field house. There's essentially at the end of the precinct, there's a, ba there's a machine for presidential and there's a machine for local. Um, so for example, uh, We've seen very very small numbers, less than 10 votes that went into the wrong machine. So if you fed a machine, uh, so for example, Andy Friedman got 351 votes in precinct one from the main local machine. There was one ballot that went into the presidential machine by mistake. That ballot is now being reallocated. This was an anticipated uh, issue because of the two machines. Um, so that will be counted correctly. So um, here we have, these have been corrected. So uh, starting again, President, Precinct 1 uh, for Andy Friedman, select board for three years, 386 votes, again corrected. Uh, Carlo Bacci, 859. Karen Gately Herrick, 509. And this is the first instance where we've had the write-in at 538 beat one of the candidates on the ballot. Sure, sure, very, very interesting. So these are corrected numbers, as we said, but they are also unofficial numbers. <laughs> yes, very unofficial, <laughs> just, just yeah. Uh, and here we have Precinct <laughs> 7, the same slate of candidates, Friedman, 439. Carlo Bacci, who was just in the studio, 748. Karen Gately Herrick, 584, and the write-in, 397. And that's all we have for now. Um, so the numbers we shared with you earlier are valid. They just might uh, change slightly uh, based on the, um, the need to correct with the second machine. So to clarify, there are a minimal number of ballots that ended up in the wrong machines, but, uh, but uh, the majority of what was done was done correctly. Exactly. But they are making sure every vote is, cor is being counted correctly. Correct. So here we have Precinct 6 for the select board for three years. Andrew Friedman, 296. Carlo Bacci, 562. Karen Gately Herrick, 379. And write-in candidates, 284. And those are corrected with, uh, with all ballots taken into consideration. So we do also want to point out that uh, ballots that were put into the wrong um, machine will be counted for the correct candidate. So if you voted for Carlo Bacci and put it in the presidential, you are not voting for Carlo Bacci for president. <laughs> uh, those will be corrected to be the correct ballot for the correct. I'm, I'm sure Mr. Bacci is grateful to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> for the cor yeah, for the correct committee. Uh, so uh, we don't have numbers here right now for school committee, but uh, we do want to make that clear about where that discrepancy is coming from. Okay, so interesting stuff. Probably <laughs> something, so you, so you were saying that this is actually an issue that was somewhat anticipated. Yes, okay. it sounds like that to me, um, especially since they're, because we're having two elections at once, sure. which you've mentioned before, mm -hmm. they needed to have two different machines to count them. And human error being what it is, it was bound to happen. And I, it sounds like everyone anticipated that. Okay. We have here some numbers for school committee. Uh, these are two uh, seats for three years. Uh, Precinct 1, Megan figler Carey with 574 votes. Aaron Gaffin with 631 votes. Carla Nazaro with 740 votes. And again, these are the corrected numbers. <laughs> we'll continue to point that out as we the go along. The corrected unofficial numbers. The corrected unofficial numbers. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Coming to you straight from RCTV. <laughs> straight from RCTV. <laughs> All right, we have precinct three numbers again. <laughs> Not corrected. <laughs> We're doing the best we can here. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, again, it does look like on our uh, on the spreadsheet that we have going here um, that these numbers, the issues are very minimal. Right here we have precinct two, six numbers for uh, school committee. Meg and these are corrected. Uh, Megan fidley Carey with 317 votes, Aaron Gaffin with 474 votes, Carla Nazaro with 515 votes. And Precinct 6. Precinct 7 numbers, which are corrected. We have Megan fidler Carey, 504 votes, Aaron Gaffin with 747 votes, and Carla Nazaro with 633 votes. Again, that is two people for, or excuse me, three people running for two seats on the committee, and those are the Precinct 7 returns thus far. 
Um, I do feel pretty confident in calling the race for Alan Foles. So okay. congratulations to Alan again. Breaking news here on RCTV. <laughs> congratulations to Alan again. Uh, and here we have the Precinct 8 vote, uh, votes for the select board. Andrew Friedman with 314, Carlo Bacci 488, Karen Gately Herrick 504, and writing candidates received 420. So there, uh, again, the write-in candidate uh, had an official campaign for John Halsey, Halsey uh, and those votes will need to be hand-counted in the coming days. Again, you know, write-in votes could be for anybody, mm -hmm. and um, they just need to make, you know, need to figure out exactly who was written in in the various ballots. The expectation is, is the majority of those votes will be for John Halsey, but we can't presume that they all are for John Halsey. And so far, we've only seen one uh, precinct where that might be, uh, where, where the write-in candidate might surpass one of the candidates on the on ballot. On the ballot, yeah. That is correct. All right, so I think maybe while we're waiting here for some new numbers to come in, I think maybe we ought to take a, a quick break, and we will be back here on RCTV with official election coverage, <laughs> with officially corrected ballot counts. Uh, with unofficial, unofficial, unofficial results. results. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. We'll be back in just one moment here on RCTV. Okay. And we're back at RCTV's coverage of the 2020 election. Uh, the town local election and the presidential primary. I'm Katie Robertson. I'm here with Kevin Vent. We've had quite a roller coaster of an evening. It has been quite a roller coaster of an <laughs> evening already. We've had several candidates come in yes. and share with us, and that's been excellent. Uh, Carla Bacci has been here. Karen Gately Herrick mm -hmm. has been here. Um, Carla Nazaro has been here. Alan Folds, who we are calling the election for Alan, yes. Alan Folds <laughs> for moderator um, uh, for another year in town here. And uh, and but we've had several candidates, and that's been excellent. And they've uh, they've all. Uh, I've been waiting like we have been mm -hmm. to make sure some of these uh, uh, counting issues are corrected. Yes. And we just want to reassure people, of course, that every vote will, in fact, be counted and will be counted for the correct person. It's just a matter of, you know, making sure they got in the right bin and all that kind of thing. And so we want to get it right and, and, and all that. But I do believe that we have some results coming in pretty quickly here, uh, maybe from Precinct 2, I think. Is that correct? And here we go. Precinct 2. Uh, select board for three years, Andrew Friedman, 297, Carlo Bacci, 637, Karen Gately Herrick, 413, and another precinct where the write-in candidates, 340, again, those might not all be for one person, but those candidates do outbid uh, Andrew Friedman uh, on this particular precinct. Yeah. If they are all for one person. Again. If they are all for one person, there's no way to know that mm -hmm. until they're hand counted. Yeah. Uh, here we have Precinct 3, 397 for Friedman, 733 for Carlo Bacci, 526 for Karen Gately Herrick, and 300 write-in votes. Uh, that's the top two are, are going to take seats for that. Uh, so then we have some unofficial, unofficial numbers <laughs> for Andrew Friedman, 424 votes, Carlo Bacci, 667 votes, Karen Gately Herrick, 515 votes, and 352 votes for the write in candidates. Uh, these may change based on the uh, situation I explained earlier with the double uh, machines. Right. It is interesting, though, to look at the number of uh, votes that the write in candidates are receiving, mm -hmm. even if they uh, are, most part, for the most part, falling behind the um, declared candidates. It is still interesting to see w w a significant number of votes, I think it has really affected this race mm -hmm. um, in, in several different ways. We do have some numbers here in Precinct 5 but are not corrected. So, okay, but they're there and they're not corrected and you can see them and they look wonderful. <laughs> um, but uh, So, um, we do have some other, other numbers are coming in as they're available. So here we have the school committee for three years. Uh, Megan Fiddler Carey, 475, the exact same as Erin Gaffin with 475, and Carla Nazaro, 545. That is wild. Yeah. Again, I would point out you don't think your vote matters. Yeah. Here you have two candidates got the exact same number of votes in one of the precincts. Wow. You know? One vote would have changed. Yeah. One vote you know, would, 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 would make a difference mm -hmm. in this particular precinct. 
Um, and you hear that all the time. People say, I don't vote. I don't think my vote really matters. And, you know, you know what, is, what, what difference does mm-hmm. one vote make? And you know, we can come up with any number of situations where one, two, five, ten votes in one direction or the other in the local elections in particular really do matter. Mm-hmm. I always, you know, people ask me, why should I vote in local elections? I always say your vote is actually more important in local elections yeah. than it is in national elections because of what percentage of the total your vote actually takes. Yeah. And here we have the Precinct 8 numbers for the Select Board, Andrew Friedman, 314, Carlo Bacci, 688, Karen Gately Herrick, 504, and the writing candidate, 420. I would say anecdotally, it seems like Carlo Bacci and Karen Gately Herrick are uh, in the lead for the Select Board. It seems so with the with the uh, what is it now five precincts reporting that we have at for, least yeah I think for we Select might be Board. At six so at this point. you know when we talked to Mr. Bacci a few minutes ago, we said you know, it was looking good. We can't call anything yet, but it's mm-hmm. looking good for him. It also was looking good for Karen Gately Herrick at yes. this point as well. Uh, but we have to wait. I mean, something could change in the remaining mm-hmm. precincts that we have. Here are some precinct five numbers. Uh, for Select Board, Andrew Friedman with 388 votes, Carlo Bacci with 592 votes, Karen Gately Herrick with 545 votes, and there were 264 write-in votes uh, for candidates for write-in candidates in, in Precinct 5. I'd also like to point out in the state with 11 percent of the precincts now voting, so it's, at least it's getting a little more there that Joe Biden uh, has a five-point lead over Bernie Sanders in the state. But in uh, Middlesex County, Elizabeth Warren is still leading. Oh, so interesting. 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 Yeah. interesting. So Precinct 6 for Select Board uh, for the three-year term, Andrew Friedman, 296, Carlo Bacci, 562, Karen Gately Herrick, 379, and the writing candidate, 284. And again, not all of those 284 votes may be for the same candidate, but it is interesting that it's, it's right close to the uh, third place position. Yes. Um, so again, this is one of the first years that we've had the write-in on, on the polling screen. Right. Um, I'd pe- be interested in seeing actually what previous years uh, write-ins came in at. Yeah, and people write in candidates all the time, yeah. but I think this year there was, there was a real push for a particular mm-hmm. write-in candidate for John Halsey. Um, so here we have some school committee numbers for Precinct 3. Uh, Megan fiddler Carey with 347 votes, Aaron Gaffin with 598 votes, and Carla Nazaro with 792, a very impressive number there uh, out of Precinct 3 for mm-hmm. school committee. I also think that these numbers uh, are much higher than we usually see in a local election. So I do think it they supports are. our... Um, our theory that this might have been a higher uh, voter turnout than we expected. Absolutely, because I mean, if you look at well, we just had precinct up there six up there a second ago. But there were sixteen, mm-hmm. seventeen hundred votes. Yeah. Uh, for school committee in precinct six there, and uh, uh, for so school about committee seventeen hundred on yeah, the screen right now. About yeah. seventeen hundred on the screen right now. So if you multiply that out over eight precincts, if the average is somewhere in that neighborhood, you know that puts you in the forty, fifty percent of the electorate range for a number of people who voted you know this time maybe even a little higher than that so so I think that's a good thing I mean hopefully we've learned some things there and my hope really is of course that that this isn't an anomaly because of the presidential primary mm-hmm. but people will actually get involved in voting for the local elections because they realize that they they do have a voice yeah. in these things and hopefully that will continue on you might not see the 50 60 percent or whatever 40 you know upper 40s wherever it's going to land uh, but if we can get those numbers higher on the local elections than they have been in, in recent years uh, when there isn't a a big ballot issue or something mm-hmm. coming up i think that would be uh, better for the town mm-hmm. in the long run yeah I think, too, um, I mean, the, the local interest in this election has been particularly high, um, but maybe that will, not necessarily in the same way, but will bleed into f- f- further elections. I hope maybe, so. Maybe, um, you know, what's been happening in the town recently will have people be more interested in local government and what's happening um, in their town and, and be more involved in the future. Absolutely. And you know, sometimes people say, how do I find out information about what's going on in town? I don't really know where to go. Well, let me give you a couple of options oh, there. <laughs> all right. We, first of all, you have uh, local newspapers and that kind of thing. Of course, we have the uh, our local newspaper, which is the readingpost.com, where you can find out local meeting coverage on numerous uh, boards and committees that are doing work in town. You also, of course, have RCTV, which we are appearing on currently, uh, many boards and committees have live televised meetings as well as those meetings are are replayed numerous times over the course of the weeks following the meeting. Um, But you'll have to correct me, with, but I know select boards, school committee, conservation commission, CPDC, ZBA, Mm -hmm. um, 
occasionally library meetings. Occasional um, library meetings, FinCom, yeah. the yeah. Finance Committee, um, are historical all historical commission. Historical commission occasionally, if there's something going, Health mm -hmm. Board, if there's mm -hmm. an interesting issue coming up, are all televised mm -hmm. on RCTV, including, of course, and we don't want to diminish this by any stretch of the imagination, all sessions of town meeting yes. are televised uh, live and then in, 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 in reruns yeah. <laughs> and replay. And we've also uh, been looking to Facebook streaming for, mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of coverage lately, uh, both of the school committee and the select board forums were Facebook streamed. And yep. then, of course, the special meeting of the select board uh, held at the library a couple of weeks ago was also Facebook streamed, and it was one of our most popular. Sure, and oftentimes uh, town meeting is streamed also. Not always, mm -hmm. but oftentimes mm -hmm. it is as well, whether it's on social media or some other location. And if you miss the if you miss the replays of town meeting and whatever and local meetings online or on TV and whatever, you can see them on YouTube also, yes. which is something to point out. So here we have some numbers from Precinct 1 for Select Board. We have Andrew Friedman uh, with 386 votes, Carlo Bacci with 859 votes. I think that's the new record for a, uh, a number that we've seen tonight. Personal high. Yeah. Personal <laughs> high. Uh, we have Karen Gately Herrick with 509 votes and 538 votes for the writing candidate. So this is one of the situation we were talking about earlier where uh, the write-in candidate write-ins actually was higher uh, than the the post one of the posted candidates, a couple of the posted candidates. And in the same slate for the select board for precinct two, Andrew Friedman two hundred ninety-seven, Carlo Bacci six hundred thirty-seven, Karen Gately Herrick four hundred thirteen, and the write-in there were three hundred forty write-in votes. Precinct three, Andrew Friedman received three hundred ninety-seven votes. Carlo Bacci with 733 votes. Karen Gately Herrick received 526 votes, and there were 300 write in votes on this ballot for Precinct 3 4 Select Board. And again, the top two vote getters will uh, uh, win seats on, on the Select Board. Precinct 5, uh, same slate 388 votes for Andrew Friedman. 592 for Carlo Baggi, right behind him, five, 545 votes with Karen Gately Herrick, and 260 vote, 64 votes for write-in candidates. Precinct 6 numbers are in, and we have uh, Andrew Friedman with 296 votes, Carlo Bacci with 562 votes, Karen Gately Herrick with 379 votes, and there were 284 votes that were written in. So only a few votes behind Andrew Friedman in that particular uh, um, precinct. Precinct 7, 439 votes for Andrew Friedman, 748 votes for Carlo Bacci, 584 votes for Karen Gately Herrick, and 397 write-in votes. So right up there, almost 400 votes in the write-in. Yeah, which write -in. might be, oh, no. Yeah. So and then in Precinct 8, uh, 314 votes for Andrew Friedman. Carlo Bacci, 688, Karen Gately Herrick, 504, and 420 write in votes for Precinct 8. In so the write -ins. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think we're only missing one precinct. That's in these correct. Votes, I think we're missing Precinct 4. Yeah. And precinct 4, which we had already reported had some issues. Yes, it was so. the one with the yeah. most issues. And here we have hey, actual Alan numbers Folds. for, for <laughs> We've been unofficially calling that, but Alan Folds received 6,459 6, votes en route to another victory for the 24th <laughs> year uh, as, as, uh, as our town moderator. If he runs next year, it'll be a quarter century of Alan Folds as the moderator. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. God bless him. Yeah. Uh, so that's, a re that's really wonderful uh, that we're getting some, some final numbers, which yeah. is great. Um, and also wonderful for Alan Folds. Congratulations to him. Yes, he's, yes. A, he's a firm friend of the R RCTV. He's a friend of so. RCTV <laughs> and, and, uh, and uh, you know, a civically minded uh, uh, leader, and, mm -hmm. and we're glad for him to, to continue in his role. He does an excellent job at that. Here we have some numbers from Precinct 1 for school committee. Again, this is the top two vote getters will gain seats on the school committee. There is another school committee race uh, where only one candidate is running for the one year seat. But in this race, we have Megan Fiddler Carey with 574 votes, Aaron Gaffin with 631 votes, and Carla Nazaro with 740 votes. That is a lot of votes on one on one slate. That is, that is a lot of votes, yeah. Here we have some select board numbers for Precinct 1. We have Andrew Friedman with 386 votes. We have Carlo Bacci with 859 votes. We have Karen Gately Herrick with 509 votes. And we have uh, 538 write-in votes. Also a lot of write-in votes. Hmm. Uh, Precinct 2, Andrew Friedman, 297 votes. Carlo Bacci, 637 votes. Karen Gately Herrick, 413 votes and 340 write-in votes. 
Andrew Friedman in Precinct 3, 397 votes. Carlo Bacci, 733 votes. Karen Gately Herrick, 526 votes and 300 write in votes. Here we have Precinct 4. Uh, for Select Board, Andrew Friedman with 424 votes, Kyle Urbachi with 667 votes, Karen Gately Herrick with 515 votes, and there were 352 write-in votes. And that's the final numbers for Precinct 4. Those are the so final I, numbers. I believe we have all numbers for all okay. precincts. Okay, so we'll uh, be tabulating some of these, hopefully. Yes. Some of our <laughs> crack mathematicians <laughs> will be uh, crunching the numbers out back. Here we have Precinct 5 for Select Board. We have 388 votes for, Car for, excuse me, for Andrew Friedman. We have 592 votes for Carlo Bacci. We have 545 votes for Karen Gately Herrick. And we have 264 write-in votes in Precinct 5 for Select Board. Again, the top two vote-getters will be elected. Precinct 6, 296 votes for Andrew Friedman. We have 562 votes for Carlo Bacci. We have 379 votes for Karen Gately Herrick. And we have 284 write-in votes. Uh, Precinct 7 for the same slate, 439 votes for Andrew Friedman, 748 votes for Carlo Bacci, 584 votes for Karen Gately Herrick, and 397 write-in candidate votes. And then finally in Precinct 8, 314 votes for Andrew Friedman, 688 votes for Carlo Bacci, 504 votes for Karen Gately Herrick, and 420 votes for writing candidates. And now I believe we have totals uh, for all eight precincts. For the select board. Ah, totals in entirely, so that's wonderful. Andrew Friedman, 2,941 votes. Carlo Bacci, 5,486 votes. Karen Gately Herrick, 3,975 votes, and 2,895 write-in votes. So uh, it looks like uh, Carlo Bacci and Karen Gately Herrick had a good good night tonight. Um, we I quick to point out again these numbers are unofficial, but they took an awful long time to get to us. So <laughs> we feel pretty good about them generally. But of course, the town clerk does have to certify all these votes, which happens usually tomorrow. Yeah. Um, or, or sometimes later in the week. This will probably be a little later in the week because of the write-in votes and making sure that all of them are uh, counted correctly. Interesting to note that the write-in is very close to, uh, in, in the total there to, uh, to Mr. Friedman's yeah. total, only about what, 50 votes off or something like that. So that's a, a fascinating number, but about 1,000 votes behind uh, Karen Gately Herrick uh, there. But you, I, again, I, I know I've said this a couple times already, but I can't help but think that that write-in vote absolutely did affect this election. I think you're probably right, yes. Uh, so one more time uh, for the select board. The top two vote getters have won this election for the three-year seat. Andrew Friedman with 2,941 votes coming in third. Carlo Bacci, 5,486 votes with the top number of votes. Car K Karen Gately Herrick, 3,975 votes as the second vote getter. And 2,895 votes for write-in candidates. So we're looking there, just kind of talking about numbers, we're looking at about 16,000 votes mm -hmm. there. Oh. So uh, for M Municipal Light Board, also a contested race. Robert Coulter, I would say, has a commanding lead. A uh, commanding lead, <laughs> yes, I would say. 4,384 votes to Vivek Sony's 1,797 votes. And again, a lot of people don't pay attention to the Municipal Light Board, but you, know, you realize these are the people who set your electric rates. <laughs> and these are the people who manage or oversee the management, I should say, yes. of, of the Municipal Light Board. So it, you know, you're sitting there looking at the amount of electricity you're using in your home, these, or you have some concern or questions about that, these are the people you can go to, mm -hmm. um, and they are elected by, by you, the voters, to do this. So uh, uh, congratulations, it would appear, to Mr. Coulter, and thanks to Mr. Sony for throwing his hat in the ring and, and uh, making an attempt at that. And uh, we'll uh, see where this goes from here in, the, in yeah. the future. But those are some totals there for the Municipal Life Board. Robert Coulter appears to uh, be winning that race. This is the Library Board of Trustees. Uh, this was a non-contested race, so both of these candidates will be uh, winning the election. And I'm going to turn this one over to my colleague here because I'm not going to attempt these names. Mm, this is going to be good. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, Nina Pinacchio with 5,750 votes uh, against uh, her opponent, Monette Dugas-Verrier, with 5,362 votes. But again, both of those are winners. So congratulations yes. to both Nina and Monette. And again, even in an uncontested race here, you're looking at 11,000 votes mm -hmm. that were cast. Yeah. Um, there are about 19,000-ish voters in Reading, so that gives you an idea. I mean, if there's 11,000 that voted here, 
Um, well, it's not necessarily 11,000 different, though, because they could vote for two, so I take that back. Yeah. And we have um, some totals for school committee for the three-year term. Megan fiddler Carey getting 3,445 votes, Aaron Gaffin 4,711 votes, and Carla Nazaro, who was on set with us earlier, 5,132 votes. So, again, as we're looking at this, you know, these are unofficial, but it looks like uh, Carla Nazaro and um, Aaron Gaffin will be joining. Sean Brandt, who also uh, is running yes. on a Opposed for the one-year seat will be joining. Those three will be joining uh, the school committee this year. And it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. It's a you know 50% turnover on the school committee mm -hmm. this year, and does that affect um, how the committee works? It's a, we, we, no one knows. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it happens. We have a couple of uh, candidates or a couple of uh, members of that committee have been on the committee for a number of years, and uh, Linda Snow Doxer and and uh, Jean Borowski. Who, uh, who have been serving for, I think, two at least two terms yeah. each, and uh, they will no longer be there. So it's definitely going to be a different committee when they uh, reconvene sometime in March, or I think March 11th or 19th or something like that. It's when the school committee reconvenes, and those, those uh, um, Aaron Gaffin and um, Kyla Nazaro will be joining them for the first time on that date. So. Yeah. So uh, we're going to wrap up our coverage here of Reading's 2020 uh, March election. I want to thank my co-host, Kevin Vent. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. It's always fun when we do this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, against all odds. Against all odds. <laughs> we seem to find a way to make it interesting. But that's good. That's okay. It's, it's important. And we also want to thank all the candidates that came down to the studio tonight and congratulate all of the winners, even though we are, have unofficial results. Uh, I think we can congratulate uh, several of folks tonight on a great Great, greatly run race and thank all of the contestant contesters uh, for putting their hat in the ring. It really was a good campaign. I mean, if you watched, and hopefully you all did, of course, those uh, <laughs> candidate forums mm -hmm. around RCTV, TV, and there were a couple other ones around town that happened in the library mm -hmm. and other places. You know, the, the candidates, all of them, were really good candidates this year. Some some years there are candidates who you feel as though we're just running for the sake of running sometimes, not all, you know, often, but sometimes. But this year, all of those candidates were really good candidates, mm -hmm. and they really knew the issues. They really understood what they were talking about, and, uh, and it was a really good contest pretty much top to bottom uh, and so it was it was almost a pleasure to kind of watch mm -hmm. it go on this yeah. year and, and, and so it was really good so congratulations to everybody who uh, will be winning officially in the next few days and thank you to everyone else that ran uh, I'd like to thank the crew and staff at RCTV for putting on a wonderful shoot today uh, I think we uh, we did a wonderful job so congratulations <laughs> to us we did a wonderful we did job, a wonderful job. Uh, I think everyone else did a wonderful job as well uh, don't forget to tune into RCTV and uh, follow us on Facebook and on YouTube have a great night <laughs>